Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. We have history in the making when it comes to the Top Chess Engine Championship, a championship that I have been following closely. I would like to go to the traditional Vikansay in beautiful Holland to see what is going on. We have had round six out the way and we have four leaders, Nepo, Liren, Giri and Magnus. And then we have Vichy, Vidit, with three and a half points. And then we have Rajabov, Mamidiarov, Duda, Shankland, and Rapport with two points each. And we have at the very bottom, Fedosev, Kramnik, and Fun for Aced. So, with these standings, it was about time people from the top meet the people at the bottom. This time was Ferrosiv and Carlsen. Ferrosiv has no win so far, but did hold Anand to a draw. He also kept Rapport to a draw and also denied Vidit and Ding Viren a win. The only people who have beaten him are Fun for Aced and Duda. Carlsen, on the other hand, is his usual self. He started in the usual way with four draws and won his last two games. So he's doing what he normally does. He's yet to be beaten for a very long time though. And this is way before his championship matches with Fabi. And if I dig in deeper, I think we need to go back to Shamkir when Mamidiarov had beaten Carlsen. No, this can't be right. It was in Beal when Carlsen was beaten by Mamidiarov and not Shamkir. The game of round nine. Fedosev met Carlsen only two times and lost both games. And in both of these games, Magnus played with the black pieces. And again, this time Fedosev has the white pieces, but he's both an E4 and D4 player, so anything is expected. Since his D4 did not work against Carlsen, he might switch. Okay, he doesn't. And this is how the game kicked off. d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5, and when this knight was introduced, we have the three knights variation of the Grunfeld. After this bishop move, Ferrosif responded with h4, and the attack has already begun. And this is with the assumption Magnus is going for short. c6 got this guy to come off, and now Something Magnus would go for if he had the white pieces. Carlsen got his other knight into the game. And when d4 was double protected, Magnus finding castles, and that h4 initiative was at least not wasted. Queen b3 trying to get the knight to attack him did in the end lead to this. And when the queen moved out and into a3, Carlsen came up with his initiative. He probably wants the bishop to take the knight, and this is exactly what happened after castles and Fedosev went for short too. Magnus moved his bishop out of the back rank and probably waiting for Fedosev to show his hand. Fedosev went after this bishop and when b5 turned up, queen a6 and maybe at this point removing the bishop may have been a much stronger response. Carlsen challenged the queen but Fedosev reject it. When the queen returned to challenge her again, I think Magnus was happy to see the queens go, but this is down to Ferrosif. He finally went for it, and when this bishop also came off, this is how Carlsen captures. And what is the significance of this? Well, b5 is hanging, and Ferrosif took him in less than a minute. e5 takes takes and now rook c1 and Fedosev is a full pawn up and he's going for it and what a game this will be if he manages to derail Carlsen when the knight was attacked he was forced back and when this knight moved in to attack the rook when the rook came out of danger Magnus is a move short of removing this special one f4 what he did first was to secure c4 and only now this bishop not only moves away from f4, but goes on to attack this rock. 
after rookie eight. This guy also came off and Fedorov is now realising he's playing for only one result. H6 going after this bishop. Also, when he was free to go places. Fedorov brought him back here. And it's also about how Magnus moves on. He came up with this very interesting knight fork. But how effective is it, really? Rook back to base. Knight takes. And when the rook chased after this knight, something was going to come off. Rook takes. And rook takes. And Carlsen does manage to reduce the deficit. And it's all about whether the world champ is going to come up with those moves that are going to turn this game around. Magnus is confident he can make it to the very end unbeaten. And this is what he went for, challenging the bishop. Ferozif was not taking this. And he retaliated with this move. And when the rook moved out of danger, the bishops were eventually traded in. And after this exchange, this is a score. One, two, three, four, V, one, two, three, black pawns. And this is going to be some end game. Rook d1 and rook back to b4, eyeballing this guy on the rim, led to this very surprising response. And the idea is to take charge off the seventh rank. Carlson may be looking to do the same on the second rank, but it's all about who gets there first. And this is the reason why Ferozif didn't mind about h4. If you take h4, after this rook gains access to f6, f7 cannot be protected and it might be game over. So what Magnus did was to go for a king move before anything else. But is it strong enough to keep Ferozif at bay? And here is the moment of truth. When Ferozif lined up his rook on the 7th rank, and we know why that king move was initiated. Simply to stop the rook from gaining access to f6. Rook f5. And if Ferozif is not careful, Magnus can do the same to him on the second rank. After f3 and rook fourth to e2. Got this rook attacked. And through this rook move and e5, alarm bells were beginning to ring. Magnus chased after this guy, and this is how he did it. Rook e7, covering, got this rook to go after him too, and this guy had to come off. Ferozif pushed him further, and there is so much weight and too much hanging on this central pawn. When Magnus summoned this king to return to the back rank, it seems this game is over. At this moment, Ferozif was looking and looking, and before he went on to make his move, he waited and waited. It was his last move before making time, so he walked off, and after he returned to the board, and after not 10, not 15, not 20, not 25, but 28 and a half minutes later, he eventually captured with a check, and when the rook came off, it was all about how to capture here. Ferozif captured with his rook and checked at the same time. But let us come back to see what happens if he takes with the pawn. And whether there is a difference and how big this difference is. Take with the pawn and after rook c2, king h2. No, no, hold. The idea is to not allow this guy to slip into h5. So... Belay that, and let's try h5, and when this guy takes, now king h2. Rook back to c1, g3, rook back to c3. King g2, a rook check, for example, is going to get the king to sneak into h3, and if the rook goes after f3, after f4, rook fourth to the first rank, and rook back to a5, if this is not winning, it would at least be a very large challenge even for Carlsen to neutralize this one. Okay, let's come back. Ferozif captured with the rook, which I think is also winning. After king g8, it's all about this next move, and one Ferozif could not find. Maybe the pressure was getting to him. 
With this pawn surplus, he can afford to drop something, but he wasn't going to let this happen. He covered this pawn, and the king chased after the rook. Carlsen would be very happy to draw. When these moves repeated, it suddenly clicked. Ferozev moved up this guy, and when he was arrested, the rook returned to f5. Rook takes, and rook takes, and both Carlsen and Ferozev were fighting the same game. One is going to try and win it, and the other will be very happy to draw. King g7, king f2, rook a6, and g4 led to this check. And when the king began to make his way up the board, rook a3, pinning whatever possible to frustrate progress. Rook d5, king f6, and king f4 is all okay for white. It allowed this check, and when the king moved back, rook a1, and still white, looks much better, but Carlsen being Carlsen. If you can't stop what is going on, no one can. I rushed to get this game out because the position for black is completely hopeless. F4, which looks spot on, got the rook to chase after. What did he chase after? After this guy. And when the king was checked, the only way forward was to go back, and back he did. King F3 to cover, and now rook E1 trying to confuse Ferozev led to this rook move, cutting off the king from the game. And when the rook returned to G1, Rook e6, and Ferozif is sitting back and waiting. He has the initiative, so the onus is in fact on him to find his way to victory. Rook a1, allowing the king to advance, led to this check. And after this king move and another check, the rook stepped in and Ferozif was hoping for that move that would take him to a win. If Carlsen captures this game over, he knows it and everyone else knows it. It will be a... Absolute blunder to trade in the rooks. Magnus went for this rook move. Rook d5, keeping the rook out of any vertical checks. Did not stop the rook though from coming in with this horizontal check, which has a vertical effect. And when the king returned to where he came from, was Magnus going to hold this one? Another check, king d4 and rook to the other side of the board. And you know, Magnus has tricked Ferozif because any chance he had was now blown. I hope you can see why. Carlsen himself here knew it was mission accomplished and he's most likely going to keep his unbeaten record from last year. A rook check got the king to advance. Another rook check and king back to g7 got the king to march forward, and when this guy was attacked, this was it. You only get one chance against the best in the world. If you don't capitalise, you will lose it. After this king move, which was a shot in the dark, led to the removal of this guy. And even though Ferozif came in with this check, after the king to the back rank, Ferozif went for it. He pushed on with this guy, but it was not going to go far. Both rook a4 or rook f4 are fine. Magnus went for option number two, and when the king moved into f6, there are still a few tricks that can be tried. Rook f1 and even these king g6 and a rook check from the back rank are not going to work because this is the reason why this rook is placed here, to not allow this to happen. A rook check, king h7, and when these moves actually repeated, Ferozif didn't even bother to try and go for that very simple trick. And this is where the game also ended. So, a draw. Ferozif had in fact this one in the bag, and yet Carlsen slipped like an eel. And he's pretty much good at this. So, another draw on the board between one of the leaders and one at the opposite side of the standings. Most of the other games have also ended... But do watch out for one game in this round in particular, and I might have enough time to cover it. Highly unlikely though, but I will try my best. So until next time, this was your chess puzzler. <laughs>